welcome back to recreate this look. We are doing Joan from Mad Men and this is where we ended up. So join me on this journey and I hope that you enjoy it. Let's go. Played by the amazingly talented Christina Hendricks. Just like last time, Elamis Superfood Priming Moisturizer. If you've never watched Mad Men before, it used to be on Netflix. That's where I watched it last year because my dad really likes that show. And so uh, he was a fan, told me that it was good, but I just never, never gave it a chance until I was stuck at home, not working. And I thought, well, let me just give it a chance and I'm gonna be real with you. I did not enjoy it until the second season. Wasn't really interested in Don Draper's background so, so much. I think I was just confused in the beginning. Like, what is all of this? I think, is his name Roger Sterling? Oh God, now I'm gonna forget his name. Roger Sterling is, to me, the funniest character on that whole show. And probably the reason why I stuck with the show and like actually, you know, hung in there. By the time I really got into it, I, I really did like it and I did enjoy it. And there are some really funny episodes. Definitely Joan was one of those characters for me. I feel like Joan went through a huge transformation on the show. She went through so, so much on that show. Her focus does finally emerge and her focus and her drive finally do sort of converge and meet and then she's able to find a path for herself forward which when you think about it is really inspiring. And I just thought, wow, you know, especially for women at that time, and especially for women who were working in those types of environments at that time, if you never watch Mad Men and you think that it's like, you know, because it's set in the 60s, it's super sexist and super racist. Um, I mean, the show I don't feel is racist or sexist. I think the show, accurately portrays people in those environments being racist and sexist and then other people kind of looking at that like oh wow that's really what happens you know what i mean the show itself is very well written oh i forgot to show you what i'm using for concealer this is the Too faced born this way concealer and eyeshadow primer is the pretty vulgar eyeshadow primer. Of course, I use my IT Cosmetics CC cream. So the reason why I picked Joan out of all of the female characters on this show, I mean, I could have picked Betty's other wife that, of course, her name escapes me at the moment, but she was young with the dark hair. But Joan always just, like, really had an impact on me while I was watching the show. Was one of the characters that grew the most throughout the, the series for me. And I think that she decided at a certain point that, you know, she could either let what was happening to her just keep on happening or she could turn it around and change it. And I was watching this YouTube video, which I will link in the description. And they do a really, really good job of kind of drawing the parallels between Don Draper and Joan and also kind of explaining the brother-sister relationship that they seem to have, which is why they never hook up, which is why they never like have an affair. Also, I don't think Don Draper would have messed with Joan purely because that was like Roger's girl. As antiquated and gross and sexist as that sounds, I don't think that, be, I don't think that Don would have done that to Roger because he knew how much Roger loved her. And that whole Roger and Joan situation made for some really good TV. That character could have been very one note. You know, that character could have been very like, oh, I'm the office floozy and like that's it and like blah, 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 blah. Like she could have really like leaned heavy into that and she didn't. And I have to give her credit because she really made that character, she made Joan into like a fully realized person that had struggles behind the scenes, that had her wheels turning. You know, she had all of this, you know, down, put together. She was cute, she was this, she was that. She was always perfect head to toe, but there was always a wheel turning in the back, like, okay, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? You know, especially after she like had the situation with the husband and the kid and you know, all the above. If you haven't watched the show, I'm not gonna like spoil it for you, there are certain things that she thought would set her up for life and they didn't. And then she had to make 
some really crappy choices, let's say compromises, that I'm sure a lot of women at that time had to make and sacrifice their own well-being and their own mental health to kind of get ahead, you know, however they needed to get ahead. So it is set in the 60s. So it starts out right around 1960, 61-ish and ends up right around 1970. There's definitely references to historical events. You see the moon landing, for example. You see everyone, you know, sort of huddled around the TV watching that, how the characters relate and react to them. So like JFK, MLK, you tackle racism, sexism. It is no longer on Netflix, but it is on AMC Plus and you can get that through Amazon Prime. You can get that on its own, I believe too. I think they have their own platform. Do the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. So this is a lip pencil by Beauty Vault in Natty Nat. It's Huda Beauty Lifeliner Very Vanta in Extreme Black. It's the pencil and the liquid liner combo. It Cosmetics Lash Blowout. So I'm gonna use these lashes from Anastasia Beverly Hills the synthetic lashes, and they're called Fashion. No lower liner, no lower lash. These are way too thick, but we're going with it. I feel like that's the common theme of all these, is like, I mess up and I'm like, oh, well, we're just gonna go with it. It is what it is. Pretty much done with the look itself now it's time to get into hair and wardrobe in the photos that i'm using as a reference joan has like not a full beehive going on but it's a very like modified beehive if that's a, a phrase that i could use Okay, so like to polish it up a little bit, I had to repin a couple areas and use this Moroccan oil uh, luminous hairspray, just kind of like let it dry before I touched it. And then I had to pin, repin this and pull it down slightly so I could like pretend like I had that little bang area. But that's basically all I did is just repin, spray, repin, spray a couple of times until I got the actual shape that I wanted rearrange some stuff like once you have the basic shape then you can go in and refine it as much as you need to so i feel like the hair is okay i'm gonna go put on the outfit and here she is the final look um 
I actually really like it. So just a quick little backstory. This is actually my grandma's, this is my dad's mom's pin um, that I got after she passed away. I got some of her, her jewelry. My uncle gave me some of her jewelry. And so that's one of the pins that I got from her. So that's super cool that I was able to use it today. Kind of, you know, sentimental about that. And this dress is from New York and Company. I got it a long time ago, probably like two years ago. I think I did okay. I mean, I'm not mad at it. Definitely have a little few little flyaways. Not as polished and put together as Joan, but who is? She's not even that polished and put together when you really think about it. But anyway, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So I'm gonna go take some pictures. Those will be at the end of the video. I appreciate you watching. I hope you had a good time with me watching me do all this. And if you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I will see you next week for another Recreate This Look. Have a good one.